For the rest of this week, I'm going to do examples of dynamical systems, and the first is Leslie matrices, which are used in mathematical biology. One of the starting points of mathematical biology is the study of population growth. Though many of the most interesting systems involve multiple species with various interactions, symbiosis, competition, predator, prey, etc., the theory starts with single species dynamics. How does a species grow or decline when considered by itself? For those of you who've taken calculus with me, I use population growth as a major motivator for that course, working with the differential equations that describe exponential and logistic growth. Sometimes I want to know more details about the population than simply the count of all of its members. One way of describing a population is by age categories. This is called an age-structured population. This is pretty common in human geography, where the population of a country or other human groups is often given in 10-year increments. It also can be useful in animal populations, since there are often important age-defined subsets that control the growth or decline of a population. In conservation biology, resources can be much more carefully used if a model can focus on a specific age category in a population. In the simplest single species model, there is a birth and a death rate. But for an age-structured population, the situation is more complicated. Instead of just asking for a death rate, I now need to know the survival rate from each age category to the next, assuming that no one survives from the oldest age category. If there are n age categories, that it's n minus 1 survival rates, again excluding the eldest. And likewise, instead of a generic birth rate, I need to know the birth rate from each age category. And these are called fecundity rates. There may be fewer of these, or rather, some of them might be sent to zero, since only certain age categories might be fertile. But again, in theory, I have to set up these new rates. How do I track all of this information? Well, I can do it with a dynamical system. A Leslie matrix is a dynamical system that models an age-structured population. To demonstrate, I'll assume that there are four age categories. The stage state vector is the current population in each age category. W is the youngest, X for the next, Y for the next, and Z for the population of the oldest. There is a matrix that takes one state to the next, and this is called a Leslie matrix. Nine of these entries must be automatically set to zero, since they are categories that cannot transfer to other age categories in one time step. For example, something in age one cannot directly jump to age four, nor can something in age three suddenly get younger and move into age two. I want to interpret the remaining seven non-zero entries. The first row outputs to the first category, so that represents the creation of new members of the population. Each fi here is the fecundity of the population in state, its rate of producing offspring. Of course, some of these might be zero if only certain age categories produce offspring. The si, on the other hand, are the transition from one age category to the next. These are the survival rates. s1 is the rate of survival from 1 to 2, s2 from 2 to 3, and s3 from category 3 to category 4. Leslie matrices are irreducible. Recall that irreducible, irreducibility meant that each state connects to each other. By survival and fertility, it is possible to pass from every age category to another over several time steps. This means there is a unique largest eigenvalue, lambda, with a positive eigenvector. And this is the value I'm going to care about. In the long run, this largest eigenvalue dominates, and its eigenvector gives the stable age distribution. If lambda is equal to 1, I expect a perfectly stable population, and if lambda is greater than 1, I expect exponential growth, and if lambda is less than 1, I expect exponential decay. In addition, I can look for the limit of the ratios between the age categories. As the population either grows or decays, these ratios will approach fixed values, and they're represented by the eigenvector matching the dominant eigenvalue. So now I can get into examples. For all of these, I've asked a computer for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then just written down the dominant eigenvalue and its matching eigenvector. So here is a Leslie matrix. There is fecundity from the top two age categories, 0.7 newborns for each individual in category 3, and 0.6 for each in category 4. The survival rates are 80% from 1 to 2, 60% from 2 to 3, and 70% from 3 to 4. The eigenvalue here is smaller than 1. 
That means that the population will decay. The eigenvector gives the age ratios. For every member of the population in the last category, there are 1.19 in category 3, 1.65 in category 2, and 1.72 in category 1. Given that only a percentage survived to the next category, it makes sense that these ratios are all larger than 1. The previous population was not viable. The eigenvalue showed that it would decline. Here, I've only changed one coefficient. The 0 0.7 fecundity of category 3 becomes 1.1. This means there are more new members of the population. Is this enough? Well, I look at the new eigenvalue, 1.03. This is enough, even if just barely. This population will now grow, and the age ratios have also been affected by this change. Here is a different kind of model. The fecundity, novels, the fecundity numbers are greater, uh, and so, so are most of the survivorship, but except for the first. This is some kind of animal, perhaps, where many of the young do not survive, perhaps due to predators that targ target mostly young population members. Is this population viable? It is, just over the threshold. The age ratios also show this situation. There are many members in the youngest category due to the high fecundity, but only a few of them survive to higher categories. Here is an extreme version of the previous type of population. The fecundity is much, much higher, but the survival of the young population is now only 3%. Some fish populations are like this. Many eggs to produce young fish, but there is enough predation that only a tiny percent of it make it through to adulthood. However, even with only 3% surviving in the first category, this population is thriving. 1.63 shows rapid growth, well above the threshold as 1. Finally, the age ratios are much more severe here, almost 200 young members for every one of the oldest member. This is the same as the previous slide, but I've dropped the fecundity a great deal, 150 to 50 and 50 to 30. Interestingly, this isn't enough to actually cause the population to decay. This is still enough for the population to grow. And finally, here is the same model again, but now I've dropped the first age category survival to 1% instead of 3%, and now this is enough to make the population go into decay. And through these examples, just by calculating the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, I hope it sort of demonstrates to you how they control the models and how changing the coefficients leads to changes in the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which are then used to interpret the effect of changing those coefficients on what the model is doing.